So what is water activity? Water activity is the fraction of water and food on a molecular basis. So essentially, it's just the number of moles of H2O over the total number of moles of ingredients in your food. So for water, this is going to end up being 1.0 because it's all water. However, for something like chips or apples, they'll have something below 1.0. Since chips are a pretty dry, crunchy food, they'll have a much lower water activity level than that of an apple, which would be more close to the, to the 1.0 of water since it's quite juicy. A higher water activity level supports the growth of these bacteria and other microorganisms within the food. At a level of 0.85 or higher, then bacteria is able to grow and actually thrive, and that's the reason why your food either gets stale or moldy and is actually unedible after a certain period of time. In order to calculate the water activity level of a food, we have to state a few of our assumptions. Our first assumption is that everything other than what's on the nutrition label is water. And this makes it easiest for us to calculate the water activity level based off of the total amount of ingredients in the food. Second, we have to approximate molecular weights. Since not all sugars are the same, we have to use a general assumption for what these sugars are and use an average estimate of the molecular weight of sugar. The third thing is that we neglect things that have a very low amount in the food. For example, if we have five milligrams of sodium, that's gonna be divided by 1,000 and then it's going to be over the molecular weight of about 22.99, which is gonna give us a really small number that really won't affect our final answer. So we can neglect this. Let's do an example calculation with 39 grams of gummy bears. So given the nutrition facts over here, we know that there are 39 grams total, and then there are seven grams of sugars and two grams of protein, which leaves us with 30 grams of water. Now we can find the amount of moles of water by dividing that 30 grams by the molecular weight of water in order to get 1.66 moles of water. Now we can compare this to how many moles of sugar there are. We get 0.03 moles of sugar, which is obviously much less than the water, which makes sense. Now we have two grams of protein which is gelatin, so we use 18.16, and we get 0.01 moles of gelatin. Now we can use the total amount of these moles and compare it to the number of moles of H2O. So our final AW is going to be equal to the number of moles of H2O over the total number of moles in the food itself. So that'll be the number of moles of sugar plus the number of moles of gel, gelatin plus the number of moles of water to give us a water activity level of 0 0.976. Now this is a pretty high number, it's pretty close to 1.0, which actually makes sense for gummy bears since they're generally quite chewy and almost gelatin-like, like jello, so they should have a number that's pretty close to water.